Hello, welcome back to the channel. I uh, hope you've enjoyed my previous videos. Today we're looking at the Janada 680. So this is essentially a miniature laptop and that's what HP was going for. Ultimately, they're wanting to create uh, a laptop replacement with good battery life. This is over nine hours of battery life. At the time, you would be getting sub four hours on a notebook. Um, so actually, as an all-day computing device, this is perfect. It's not the first uh, uh, palm top by HP to have a cool screen. Um, in fact, they did a clamshell one in the previous generation. Um, this does have 16 meg of RAM though, so much more powerful. Uh, and indeed, it's got many more connectivity slots, including a PCIe slot and a compact flashcard slot, which is very useful if you are attempting to get rid of your bulky laptop. Let's have a look at it. With a generous 16 meg of RAM, there was plenty of storage for documents and you could run multiple applications at the same time. Combined with the increased connectivity options, this made an excellent alternative to lugging around a laptop. Notebooks at the time would have under four hours of battery life, whereas you could expect a solid nine hours out of this. So let's take a look. On the top, we've got an indicator LED that doubles as a button to turn the alarm off. On the back, we've got proprietary USB, which is for the serial cable and um, a ba the battery, obviously. On the left side, we've got the infrared port, a PC card slot with release catch. On the front, we've got the buttons for the voice recorder with a locking switch um, and an LED indicator, uh, as well as the stylus. On the right hand side we've got a power input. This is a blank cover but would normally have the phone jack for the 33.6 kbs modem. Underneath we've got the 10 pins for the uh, docking station and um, we've got a release catch for the battery, the backup battery itself, a speaker and the compact flash assembly. So which is, I'll just show you because it's a bit unusual, it springs up, you can see that the speaker's actually held within that, and a PC card, when that goes in, actually lifts the whole unit, so if we pop that back down, you'll see it lifts the whole unit, which makes it a bit odd when you put it back on the bench. Over complex, I think. Right, let's open it up and take a look. As we've already seen, there's a large 6.5 inch color display um, with four silk screen buttons. And um, we've got um, F keys at the top, um, which launch each program in turn, and a reset button down the side, and the power switch just on the right hand side. The mechanical keyboard is the first time HP have used one of these, um, and it's a big step up from the rubber keys on the older devices. So I've just set a few things up, as you can see, and um, the first thing you'll notice is that it looks an awful lot like Windows 95, and that's because that's what it's based on. In fact, a lot of the shortcut keys from Windows 95 work on this handheld PC, so the Windows E will bring up an explorer bar, Windows M will minimise any open windows. If you select something, I've selected the recycle bin, Alt and Alt Enter will show you the properties. Because it is based on Windows 95, we get a full file system, unlike on the palm size PC and pocket PCs which follow. This makes it much easier for foldering items and retrieving documents. And you can also, when you delete things, if it's on the internal memory, um, it sends it into the recycle bin. Um, so you can then retrieve them. Uh, you'll see that I've actually uh, I've got lots of shortcuts in the recycle bin from when I tidied up, um, but they can all be restored um, as usual, um, or we can empty the recycle bin just like you would on Windows 95. So let's have a look at a few of the built-in applications. Most of them are quickly accessible from the upper bar of keys, the F keys, so we'll start at one end and work across. We've got an inbox, obviously for your emails.
this will synchronize with Outlook or if you use a Wi-Fi card it is possible to get a POP3 service for this. We've got Internet Explorer after that. Um, to be honest, Pocket Internet Explorer wasn't very good at the time and these days is completely obsolete. You'd be lucky to open the Google search page, uh, but we might look at that in a future video. We've got the voice recorder. It's very similar to the palm size PC. Um, you simply press the button and it'll record a sound. And um, here's one that I've recorded. As you can see, the sound quality is awful, but that's how it is. I don't know if that's specific to this machine or whether it was a problem with all of them. We've got the contacts database and um, here are my uh, friends um, Albert Einstein of course. To do application you can see you can prioritize same as the palm size PC you can set them with a category you can add notes to them um, uh, there's your note that's added you can set timers so that they only come up when they're due such as this one so pretty straightforward very usable Next up, this is the calendar function. So this is the same as the palm size PC. We've got the different views. Obviously, it's a little bit easier to use because of the layout, because of the wide screen. It does give you that calendar on the side. So you still don't get any details. You can only see the timings. But HP have added a nice piece of software here, the HP Viewer. And this gives you month at a glance and with uh, text in for what's actually happening on that day. Down the left side, you can quickly go to your contacts. You can also quickly go to your to-do. So this is a very handy way of switching through applications. Next along the bar is this one, which is Quick Notes. So this is the HP QuickPad. Um, it, it's just a quick way of putting text information in, as you can see. And um, you can then send them to other um, functions. So for example, hitting the shortcut up at the top, paste it directly into Word and then ask you what you want to save it as. So, and that's saved. So yeah, great. Next along here, we've got Pocket Access. So this allows you to synchronize tables. Here's the sample one. And synchronize tables and SQL procedures with a main database. It doesn't give you the full front form view that you would get from Real Access, but this kind of synchronization would be very useful for businesses on the go. Perhaps not these days since Access is obsolete. Next on, we've got Pocket Excel. This is a limited version of Excel. You can't do any graphs in it. It does have a lot of formulas. So for basic spreadsheets, it works fine and will then synchronize on your PC um, with Office 97 through Office 2003. Last but not least, we've got Pocket Word. We've already seen it. Here it is there. Again, very restricted. You can add basic pictures, but you can't um, use frames or anything like that. It does basic text editing, has a limited number of fonts, um, although my understanding is you can add new fonts. You can save things as a Word document, rich text format. Um, I'll just show you this because although you can save it as an actual Word document, a Word 1.0 document, you can't then open it on here in Pocket Word. It's an odd feature, just thought I'd mention it. So the next thing we'll look at are the two um, obviously included items. There is this one. This is HP Macro. It allows you to write macros to do various procedures. So here are the standard ones that are built in. So for example, if you've got all these documents open, you can now close them at a single click instead of having to go through them. This is obviously very handy if you're dealing with a lot of documents at once. I've written a macro myself just to show you how easy it is to do. Um, so I'll just trigger that. They're all set to keys. So I've set this one to P and off we go. So as you can see, it's quite easy to write a macro to do repetitive tasks or to create headers for um, Word documents, etc. Just like you would on a real PC. There's also this here, which is third party software and um, which is B find when the screen works and this allows you to search through any of the databases that are built in and any files it'll also search inside files so if we put a contact name in for example and hit Kirk it'll search through the contacts database it's found my one link when I select it it then opens it searches through the contacts to find it specifically and then there it is we double click and it'll open it as a file. So quite handy if you've got a large database, for example, if you are a businessman or something like this, a rep, uh, got a large database, you can find it very easily using BFind. It's 
obviously we'll search emails and all sorts as well. So continuing the theme of being like Windows 95, which it very much is, what you will see is if we go to the start menu and programs, we get accessories. So we've got a calculator, as you would expect. We've got Ink Writer, which we've seen previously on the palm size PC. This is a slightly different setup and because we've got the wider screen, but it works the same. You can write on the screen or you can select to add text if you prefer to text input. Um, and then it'll save it. These can then be exported to Word documents on synchronization and it'll appear with your handwriting exactly as it is. Or if you were to draw a picture, for example, the picture will appear in the Word document exactly the same. We won't bother saving that. So continuing on, um, we've got um, a voice recorder, which we've already seen, and the OmniSolve calculator, which is a more advanced calculator um, for calculating interest. These are standard um, items um, and the world clock, not bothered about that. Um, in the communication, we've got all the standard things, except they've added this BFAX Professional, which is obviously for sending faxes, um, either using the built-in uh, uh, terminal, uh, the built-in modem, or using a Wi-Fi card, if there was a Wi-Fi connection that you could connect to. We've got Solitaire. Obviously, this is a Windows product. Continuing on, we've got the HP applications. So we've got a backup application, very useful, not included as standard. We've got HP dial-up, which allows you to directly dial uh, phones using the um, toned phone system. That's the link to the quick pad and the viewer. We've got our hotkeys. This allows you to assign new um, applications to your hotkey setting. Very useful since these days you're not going to be using your inbox very much on here because it's frankly rubbish. And the same goes for your Internet Explorer button. I mean, why would you? So you can simply choose a new application from the drop down list. And there we have it. So this first button is now linked to Inkwriter. And it's as easy as that. So let's have a little look, see what else we've got. There's the Pocket Office and the Pocket Outlook links. And that's about everything that's included. So we'll just close all these down and then I'm going to install a couple of other applications that you might find useful and we'll return in a moment. So I've just installed a few bits of software which I found at HPC Factor. Um, I've put a link in the description below. They have tons of software for all handheld PCs. Um, so we'll just have a quick look. I want to show you a couple of things that you can do with this. So it I've got an ebook reader, um, although I think I probably need a bit of time to play with it and figure it out exactly. Um, but uh, there we are, you can read ebooks. I think ebooks generally are better on a black and white screen personally, which is why I like the palm for reading ebooks. Um, we've got an MP3 player. So this is home. There is a you can register this. Um, it's become abandonware, and you can get the code on HPC Factor. And um, just listen to the quality of this though. So this is just some free music from uh, Google, some royalty free music from Google. Can you hear that crackle? It's awful. And if you go to the options and attempt to improve the quality to high, we get this handy pop up that tells us that this machine can't produce high quality sound. It is limited to 22 kilohertz. Um, so yes, yeah, so I, I wouldn't particularly be using this as a music player. Not that it's got a headphone output either. Um, one of the things you can do as well is you can play videos on here. Again, you're limited by the hardware. You're not going to be watching blockbuster movies um, in HD or anything like that. You know, you're limited by um, 6, 640, 240 resolution so um, and low processing power. So you're unlikely to get more than 20 frames a second. Enough of that. And there are, of course, a few games available. So the Solitaire, we've got a Missile Commander clone. We all know how this one works. So nice and straightforward. Um, and this was freeware, so that's always nice. And we're going to close those because we're going to want all the processing power in order to try Doom. And I've not got enough memory. One second. 
So in fact, there's plenty of memory. It's just not dedicated to program memory. So we're just going to budge the slider down and then we'll try that again. Here we go. So this is a shareware ward. And we'll just quickly run a new game. So as you can see, the picture quality is not too bad. And the flicker you've got isn't present on the screen when I'm using it. But you'll see there's a lot of drag because it's a very slow refresh rate on the screen. Um, but it's just about playable. So in conclusion, I would say as an all-around Palm Top organizational tool, this is excellent. You've got all the functions you need, the jot pad, the to-do list, everything. In terms of when I buy this, the answer is no. I would wait because the next generation that comes through, the 720, uses the standard ARM processor, or what is going to become the standard is the ARM processor, which means there's many more applications available for it. In addition, it's possible to get um, possible full versions of Word and Excel um, written by SoftMaker. And that means that it actually becomes a full laptop replacement in the next generation. The sound quality is improved. They add a microphone, uh, a, um, sorry, a headphone slot. They've improved the design of the carrier for the compact flash card slot because frankly, this is a bit weird and it doesn't work particularly well. It's cumbersome and it sticks out when you use the PC card slot. So with many refinements to come, I would not buy the 680. I would in fact wait and buy the 720. Or if your budget stretches to it, the 728, which comes with double the RAM. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Janata 680. Um, stay with me and we're going to look at some more handheld PCs in the future. And we're also going to have a look at the Epoch file system and some unusual computing solutions. So don't forget to click like, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss my next video. Thanks for watching.